budget. Uh, we do have a, but we could go to the last page. We have an adjustment uh, conferred with the manager and finance director. The bottom line number of, uh, four, I'm sorry. Okay. The requested amount of uh, four million sixty thousand two hundred ninety-four should be reduced by thirty thousand. Oh. And I'll get into detail as to what that is as I move through the budget. Sure. You'll notice in the budget sheets you receive there's a number of uh, what appear to be dramatic changes, but yet the budget only really reflects the bottom line about a 1.6, 1.7 change in the overall. Some of those areas that have caused these changes include some changes uh, in the w locations where I have some of my staffing. As you remember, I came to the board uh, looking for uh, support for putting an officer on a drug task force due to the issues we've been experiencing in the region, which we've accomplished. He is off now working, uh, I understand, very diligently, very busy uh, throughout the New England area. Uh, based on that, I did not want to leave my detective division short of detectives, so I backfilled that position, even though he's still with the department, temporary duty with another agency, with the DEA. We have a lot of stuff going on here right in town that I, did, I felt that needed the attention, so I did move a position over from patrol into detectives. Did not change the overall number of full-time officers, but it did change some of the line items. You'll see increases in detective wages and a reduction in the officer wages and corresponding with training and all the, uh, the benefits such as the clothing allowance and all that changes proportionally from detective increasing to patrol uh, decreasing based on that change, if that's kind of understandable the way I put it out there. Um, the other changes uh, that you see increased Again, was the uh, radio maintenance, was that issue, was the $30,000. Uh, there was an item in there f uh, that we had put in to improve on our interior sur uh, surveillance system. We're also addressing that uh, at this point through a warrant article. So I feel the most prudent thing to do so we're not in an issue where we may be crossing over is to drop uh, 30000 of that from that line and go with the warrant article. So that's where I'm at with that. Uh, I know it's not always the way we want to deal with priority items, but it's one of those things that's a significant cost to try to go with the system. That number reflected a lease program as opposed to what I'm proposing, which in the Warren article, was, which is a purchase. And we can get into detailed discussion on that if you, if you need. Uh, the other area we've experienced an increase, like I think the other departments, is the electric. Uh, that's up 11% in that area. And I think that really accounts for most of that 1.6 is those items. If there are any other detailed questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Mr. Wardell. Thank you. Yeah, I had a couple. Um, let me just try and find where I'm. Under like, like uh, vacation wages was a 33% increase. Which, uh, which one, sir? Uh, da, 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 uh, 42103. Oops. Vacation wages. Okay. Uh, okay. 18. 18. What I did was go out and do a cost analysis uh, a little bit on the usage and obviously the adjustments to wages. The wages usually don't go down, they go up. Uh, and that's, I believe, a reflection of that Okay. and the use rates. All right. And the uh, training and recruitment, 100% up. That was on 42.103 again. That is a result of, as you remember, we went to um, a warrant article last year to do that second class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those costs for that group of officers uh, that graduated the uh, 269th part-time academy are totally borne from that warrant article, including recruitment costs. My plan for next year is we are currently, as we speak, 
doing interviews all this week for next year's class. Most of the training they'll receive and issues associated with will go into next year. I also plan on running a second class. Um, as you know, the police academy has canceled the summer class. They're not going to run that again. Um, but we have a fall class. So what we're going to attempt to do is do some recruiting in the spring, testing, and get them ready for that fall class, which will be born in that budget. So we're going to be doing a double class, but it spans over uh, two years. That's the problem with the, uh, we don't have a fiscal budget. We're on a calendar budget, and most of the stuff that the state does kind of goes fiscally mm -hmm. the way they work. So it just doesn't match up. But instead of having a Warren article, you're seeing the cost of a second class reflected in a couple items here. And is it appropriate now to talk about that radio maintenance? You said to ask a question on that, or is that to come up later? As we began the budget process, we, we know we have a critical need um, in the PD. That, that's our security surveillance system. The, the primary is that we just have to have our upbooking area. Those are the areas where people try to sue you, they claim things happen, and we want to be able to defend ourselves or in the event one of our officers acts inappropriately to be able to deal with that. Um, as we move forward, we looked at a lease program, and those were numbers that we looked at last year. But as you remember, as we went through the budget process, that got cut. As we move forward, the system is failing. Uh, we're really down to shutting down DVRs and other, other areas that I feel are critical <coughs> and moving them just for the booking room because that is our most critical. Um, so that number reflected that as a replacement of the cameras only. But what we're seeing is the DVRs and the whole system. It, it's over 10 years old now. It's outdated. Our ability to have somebody come in and actually service that system, uh, they just don't. They're not servicing that type of, that type of technology anymore. So I, I just feel that the best move for the department right now, even though it's a little bit more expensive, is to go to the Warren article and purchase a complete system. The 33000 represented a lease program that would have to occur each year. So in three years, you would exceed the cost <coughs> of the purchase. Sometimes leases are good, but not always. I know some people think that leases take away a lot of your problems, um, and they do in some issues. You see some of that going on with vehicle fleets of a larger size. Uh, but I think in this particular instance, the best move for us is the purchase. And, and without that secure, I mean, you're leaving yourself wide open for lawsuits and everything else, like you said. Well, I was asked the other day, you know, I have five warrant articles going up before the voters, uh, hopefully. Um, and which one, if I could only pick one, what would it be? It would be that. Um, that is just a facility such as the Hampton Police Department and the number of folks that we um, process, uh, it, it's just critical. I would have to first move, if, if that were to fail, um, I would have to prohibit other agencies from utilizing our facilities simply because of the, the inherent liability we have. The liability we have our own arrests, uh, and no way to protect ourselves against those claims, I'd have to restrict the facility to strictly Hampton PD, and that's difficult because we work with a lot of other agencies, um, and we, we count on them and they count on us, uh, but I would have to restrict that, and I, I don't want to get to that point. So um, that Warren article um, is critical. It, it, we have to have it. it. It's just one of those things, and I, I hate having to put it on a Warren article, but the goal this year was to come in as close to last year's budget, and there's no way throwing that money into the budget would have worked. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's a good answer. Mr. Bridal. With, with vehicle maintenance, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, you guys have gone now more towards the SUV type yes. the cruisers instead of the Crown Vicks, which yep. they don't make anymore. They don't make anymore. Uh, how, are we, how are they holding up? Um, I'd say pretty well. They're definitely um, when... Ford announced that they weren't going to make the Crown Vix anymore. It was a difficult uh, thing because the cars getting, keep getting smaller, but the cops don't. Um, it's just, you know, we have some very physically athletic people, and a lot of them are bigger, and, and they need that room. And add on top of that the equipment they carry, and also add on we're probably busier than your average New Hampshire police department when it comes to arrests and transporting people. And I was... I was in fear that we would have to go to a system of smaller cruisers and then having somebody in the transport wagon all the time, which I don't feel is an efficient use, but if that's what we had to do, we considered it. But um, Deputy Chief Hobbs at the time uh, with a group of our driving instructors went out and field tested the vehicles that were coming out that people are offering to replace it. This is the one we uh, decided to go with, um, and most of the Seacoast you'll see is 
driving those um, SUVs because they're very utility with you've got the equipment in the back, room to transport a prisoner, and enough room for the electronics that we carry these days because usually you have a, a radar system, mobile data terminal, and other associated gear that has to have, you know, the stable, stable platform to handle all of that, and this vehicle has proven pretty well for us. They're better, wouldn't that you say they're better in two in inclement weather? Oh, absolutely. I mean, nothing against the, the Crown Vic was a great, uh, great vehicle, but in the snow it was a nightmare. Uh, and in the, the weather we experience here in New England, um, it's much more user-friendly in that type of weather. And honestly, with some of the vehicles, they have come up with the big engines, and they're fast, and they're fancy. Um, we're really not worried that much about going fast worry about getting where we're going safely. We can't help you if we can't get there. Absolutely. Um, and those road conditions that we experience around here with the ice, it's definitely a good vehicle. I think we made the, made the right choice. Now that summer's over, how's your recruitment and retainment? <laughs> um, it is going to be, at least for the rest of my career, the biggest um, obstacle mm -hmm. to operations. It's just very difficult right now. Nationally, if you look around, recruitment for police agencies is down. Um, it, it's tough. It's just not a very popular job right now. Um, there's just a, a lot of violence directed towards police for a variety of reasons. Um, and people just aren't showing up uh, like they used to to test. Now, we were very happy. We conducted our test on Saturday, and we actually have 27 interviews this week. That's up uh, a little bit from the last couple of years, which is... My target goal is 15 officers either through one academy or two next year to get that number going because as we speak today, we have 35 part-time officers on our roster. Now, that also includes seven new officers that came on uh, from the summer academy that we didn't intend to use, but we brought them on as traffic control officers this <coughs> summer as we were so short-handed to work on the HBAC program and also... Uh, on the Seafood Fest and all these other associated events we run that require a lot of officers for traffic control. Mm -hmm. So at the end of August when they uh, graduated, we put together a quick uh, training course. Uh, Tom Goditis in the training corps really did a great job. They gave them some of the training they would have gotten next year, particularly in the area of traffic control, so we could utilize those officers. But that said, uh, I'm expecting uh, the attrition rate that we experience usually. We're going to lose a few of the new people to departments. We lost two right after the 4th of July to other departments. Uh, I've also, we've done some informal polling of some of the veteran officers, um, and there's a number of them are getting older, and it's getting more difficult for them to make the commitment that I anticipate we're going to lose a number of them this year too. So um, I'm looking at, before we hire any new people, that that current roster could be down in the area of 25 if we don't backfill with some new people. So we're really pushing hard to... Uh, do some recruitment. We had a couple of officers up at one of the local college CJ programs for a job fair. Uh, was it uh, St. Anselm's we went oh, up to? Merrimack College. Merrimack College, I'm sorry. Went down to Merrimack College, and we, they gave us a room just for us and sent two officers down. We have a little uh, recruitment video and just explaining how it works. And uh, just, you know, we're, we're trying. It's just it's one of these times I talked to the colonel from the state police. I talked to other agencies, Northampton PD. They, they were running a, uh, a, a, a PT test on Sunday. We're all in the same boat. It's just tough. And when people are offering full-time jobs, we're looking for part-time. It's a little bit of a harder sell. Uh, we're still getting good people, um, but it's just a little bit harder. And Manchester and Nashville keep stealing them from us, so I don't know what we can do about that. But uh, I wish there was an answer, but it is, we're just going to keep plugging away. Mm. Well, something you're going to have to, as you said, you're probably going to struggle with the whole, your whole career. I would anticipate that. I don't see a, I don't see a change in that uh, situation for at least the next four or five years. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Mrs. Wolseley. <coughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Um, the SUVs, I love them. And the manager was kind enough to allow me to be transported in one last year during one of those awful storms. Mm -hmm. But it was a great opportunity to see how it worked, and I was really impressed. I'm excited about those. Well, I, I think one of the things, uh, you know, Chief Sullivan at the time, um, big believer in getting buy-in from the, from the troops. Mm -hmm. We sent these guys out. We got three or four different models of vehicles. We tested them, and then when it came time to how we were going to, you know, scheme them up, we had the old traditional green, but 
Yeah. Times change, and sometimes a little change like that helps morale, and we let them pick out the kind of the scheme, and uh, we've gotten rave reviews about our black and whites being really sharp looking compared to some of the other towns. So. And the officer who transported me was very nice and didn't put me in jail. <laughs> Really, I, I'm, I've turned into a big fan of those SUVs. I, I like that. I like to see them. Tuition reimbursement on page 14. Are you using that every year? What kind of a call do you have for the tuition reimbursement? We, we use the tuition reimbursement. If, I just want to make sure I'm on the same. I mean, I can remember a yeah. former chief getting his law degree for some tuition reimbursement. That's capped at $8,000. It, right. We use it as, as people Perf come. Per, per, no, no not per for first, the department as a whole. Thing. It's okay. eight thousand yeah. dollars. When we run out of money, we run out of money. So okay. we, we, you know, we encourage the folks to go to school. Uh, they have to be pre-approved for the classes they intend to put in for, Good. and they have to be law enforcement related. And I believe they have to get a C or better. Uh, but that's town policy, not contractual. And we routinely, as I understand, we, we use that money. I don't believe we had any money left over from last year. Okay, so you're pretty. It's pretty much an ongoing. Um, educational opportunity. Yes. Okay, that's good. Page 15. Um, gasoline, 1,100 gallons, 330. Are you in the same position as Chief Ayotte? Um, we use the state, state. We use the state bid, so we don't get the okay. we don't get the spikes. We don't get the dips. It's okay. it's more consistent. So that's pretty much on target mm -hmm. yep. for this year. Okay, and you've addressed the training and recruitment at the bottom of that page. So you will you will end up with basically two sessions worth. That the bottom of that page is a different training and recruitment. Okay. That one is the career development costs reflects tuition costs for specialized school seminars that are scheduled throughout the year. Okay, I'm in the wrong yeah. section. This okay. is uh, one point eight one zero zero that I'm looking at on page so bottom when you of page went to the FBI Academy that's if the debt when the deputy goes to the FBI Academy the costs of a lot of that will, will be come out from that um, we we also host things like the FBI we just have the FBI leadership group in oh. we host all of their classes so we don't have to travel um, we don't Good. have to do lodging we don't have to do meal reimbursement because they're in town that what we do have to do is there's certain things we have to have by like providing coffee and water mm -hmm. and uh, like muffins and stuff in the morning for that. Significantly less cost by having them in our training room compared to, say, sending them to Maine or Connecticut. Um, we had people this year from as far away as California to attend wow. that class. Excellent. Okay, page 16 up at the top. I like very much the way you have broken out the different positions and the costs. Also, the number, you know, two detectives, 12 year step, et cetera, so many detectives at four year step. I think that gives me a, a, a much better picture. There's a downside to that. You're going to have to buy me new glasses after all the time looking at that <laughs> Excel spreadsheet. But <laughs> I tried to drill it down. Just moving forward, understand this is the first budget that I put together by my, uh, on my own. Yeah. So one of those things, I'm just a curious person. I start looking. Uh, the chief, Chief Sullivan, did a great, <laughs> did me a great duty by leaving me the spreadsheets that he used. <laughs> I just tried to expand them so I could better understand how the numbers came together. I love so the way you did that. Time. Chief Ayotte did that as well, and it gives me a better picture of the department. I yep. really appreciated that insight. Um, page 17. Something new in the police department. You have a farrier ferrying horses over the Taylor River or whatever? Uh, is that a spell check? Yeah. You get me with a spell check yeah, at, at a budget am. meeting. So <laughs> uh, I'm sure you have a nice farrier doing the doing the shoes. Can we approve a spelling change? It's all in it's all in, in the vowel, you see. But that did break me up. I have to confess when I when I saw that. Seventeen. Seventeen, okay. Yeah. Eighty two hundred. Eighty two hundred? Yeah. Yeah, but there's still a little spell check in there. Um, under traffic control and patrol, once again, I, I really appreciate the breakdown. The lieutenants, sergeants, patrolmen, whatever step, I, I think that gives us a much, much better picture of the department. Um, page 19, the motorcycle leases for the Road Kings. You're still doing two-year leases? I believe we're up to my recollection is two year lease. I think we, we I think we're doing the we do two and sometimes they'll ask me if I'll continue it for the third, which I don't object to because here's why we don't put a lot of miles on the right. bikes. And, and they're the just other thing, used by you. Yeah. 
when we stripe up the bikes to yeah. put you know, the Hampton PDOs, right. that's expensive. So if I can, if I have a bike that's in good shape at two years and they want me to take it for a third, it's beneficial to us to keep okay. it. Okay. So generally two years. Generally, have... Howie Davidson does a two-year lease, but yeah. they open it up sometimes because they know we don't want to spend the money on the striping. Yeah. Those are nice bikes. Okay. And once again, the gasoline, uh, 30,000 gallons at 330, but that's the state bid price. Correct. Okay, good. Um, now here's now the training and recruitment over here on page 20. Yep. Um, tuition costs for the specialized schools. So that's the same concept as we touched on earlier. Just different schools or for different members of the I'm department. I'm sorry, you're talking training and recruitment, but now you're talking specialized schools. Which one are we? Well, it, well, training and recruitment, I thought earlier, here, oh, tuition costs for specialized schools on page 15. And this says specialized schools and seminars that are scheduled throughout the year. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so are you I'm talking about not 3920? Yeah, well, yes, page Pre 20 uh, yep. at the top of the page. 3920, yeah. The cost to provide training seminars, a lot of that has to do with um, our use of force folks that train okay. with the firearms and the So it's batons. a little different. Yeah, absolutely different. Training type. Okay. Um, on page 21, the firearms training, the overtime wages, do you anticipate adding more training hours in the department? When I can, uh, it's a battle of, it's our insurance policy. And okay. I think anybody would tell you in the state of New Hampshire, yeah. the Hampton yeah. Police Department's firearms training is probably the best in the state. Yeah. That's why the police academy frequently calls for our instructors to come up yeah. and instruct at the academy. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, somebody won't look at me, do you have to have excellent, can't you do adequate? Yeah. No, no, I won't, I won't, I will never settle for adequate when it comes to things that could potentially take somebody's life. Our firearms training yeah. is a great program. Um, it's just one of those things because of the bit of a revolving door we're having at the bottom with the special officers. Yeah. We spend a lot of money to get them proficient, and then they're gone within a summer or two, and then we got to do it all over again. And some people take more work. Well, as a selectman who sat in the sand pits in Brentwood mm -hmm. in the late 70s to get the first training program in the department with Vic Strawbridge down from Dover. I remember Vic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've come a long way, but I'm really proud of having that firearms range in Hampton. Uh, we walked the uh, Elaine and Richard streets with uh, other uh, officials in Hampton trying to tell the neighbors how, what, a, what a nice thing it would be for them and don't freak out about the firing. We, we get some complaints occasionally. The people are very reasonable with the complaints. Yeah. They understand that we have to do this training and we try to announce it as best we can. Yeah. The biggest complaint we get is sometimes in the summertime, you know, we don't start shooting before 9 o'clock, yeah. but kids on summer vacation, sometimes they sleep a little later and it does wake them up. I understand that. I, I don't live that far from the range myself. I hear it going off, but uh, it's one of those things. It's a cost of doing business, and everybody's been pretty supportive. Yeah. I'm hoping in the next year or two we can uh, move forward, do some improvements, and maybe baffle some of the noise yes. away from the neighborhood. It just... Yeah. With the goal this year of coming in as close to the budget as we could, and I wanted to limit the number of Warren articles I was putting out there, I didn't put anything together this year. And I know some people are hoping I would. I will get to it, but I just didn't think it was the prudent thing to do with the voters this year. So we walked household to household in that neighborhood pushing it, and I'm really proud of having that there. And now, radio maintenance on 22. So this... The number this you is see, different from the Warren article that you're proposing? I think there would be pro possibility of some crossover with that, and I just don't want any confusion on that. So I the just want to strike the 33 from the CCTV camera replacement right. and change the radio supplies to six to reflect 6,250. So we're minusing 30,000 from the uh, radio maintenance line. And this is probably a stupid question, but I'm assuming you have the cameras in the Sally port. We have them. It's not so much having the cameras. It's what's being recorded and what's not. What's failing is the recording system, the digital video recorders. Oh. They're 10 years old, and it's technology that's it's still like anything with a You buy a computer, and three years later, it's obsolete. It's designed obsolescence, we call it. Because to me, um, that's kind of a critical area. It is a huge area. The booking, yeah. the booking room, the sally port as you come in, 
Yep. And it's just, I can't emphasize enough, we have to get that Warren article passed. Yes. It, it's the most critical one we have. Okay. And I, I, I really am, I didn't go through it as fast as you did, but I just got a little bit more, page 23 at the top. And then, now you are confirming here that you're going to have a double class of special recruits in 2016. In the, yep, and the way that's going to work is right now, we are in our testing process. Mm -hmm. That process gets us all the way up to December. They won't start the special academy up in Concord because we no longer host it in Hampton. They had to cut that because of the state budget Maybe issues. You said that. Yep. They'll be going up to Concord in probably February, late January or February, to start that class. They'll come back out to us, train, train with us, and be ready to go for the summer of 16. What I also plan to do is run another testing process sometime in March to get ready for the fall academy, which is the end of September, October. So that's what that additional cautioning of a double class. Good. We probably won't see those folks <clears throat> until 17, but it's just one of those things because of the way we're budgeted compared to the way they operate. Mm -hmm. We split the operating costs of putting people on usually between two budgets, just the way it happens. You gentlemen have done a beautiful job, and Deputy Hobbs is going to smile before he leaves here tonight. I know he is. No, I told him he's not allowed to smile at these things. <laughs> We're very serious. <laughs> Mr. Bean. Great job, gentlemen. Appreciate it very much. I have no questions. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> would you like to do uh, the animal control budget for us? Yes. Or what yes. we like to call the, the peat repeat budget? <laughs> uh, just a, a note on that. I don't know if you folks heard. Um, Pete is out, convalescing from some injuries. Oh. Uh, he took a little fall down the stairs at home, uh, so oh. he got dinged up pretty good. So. Nobody bit him. No, no. Fall. I mean, uh, uh, we don't worry about Pete getting bit. We worry about what's going to happen to the dog that bites him. So um, oh. it, it wasn't a work-related thing. He was at home. That was um, bad. But just. Uh, Best wishes to him in a quick recovery. He does uh, a great job with us and he's a sweetheart. Takes a so. lot of problems off off of people's hands yeah. that they don't want to deal with. Page forty-seven. Yeah. Um, the only thing I think you're really going to see a, a huge change. I think we see the supplies and expenses. Mm -hmm. I think most of that has a lot to do with. Um, with a new vehicle and dealing with that and yes. getting equipment up to date. We're trying to get him set up so he has the proper equipment. He was in that beat up old truck and some of the stuff he had was kind of nasty and we just felt it was time to start upgrading the equipment. So that's really what that reflects. I mean, we had a big dog in our yard and when Peter pulled in, I mean, we had to sit the dog in the front passenger seat because the dog was really too big to go in the back of the no, Pete's an amazing guy. Some of the problems he's dealt with over the years, and uh, I even got emailed from some folks I went to the National Academy with about the, yeah. if you remember the picture of the uh, the animal trying to come through the door at somebody's house. Pete dealing with that one. That made national news, yeah. believe it or not. Um, yeah. And that's Pete. He's just always there. And, 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 the, and a wonderful, compassionate person, too. So He deals I, with some I, tough I, situations with people with their animals because they can be hard him. on people. So Nice budget. Thank you. And I think the last one, uh, Mr. Chairman, is I have the emergency management. Um, so how much yes. on it? It's a thousand dollars. We absorb a lot of the stuff we do either through state funding uh, that I'm really getting as emergency <coughs> management, really getting in tune with. I think I probably spend more time on with my uh, emergency management rep than I do anybody else during the week. Um, <coughs> but they're great. They're, they're getting me up to speed on things. I, I believe. Um, I'll be coming to you probably within the next couple of weeks to ask for the appointment of Chief Ayod as my deputy. And we're going to be scheduling out some of the uh, emergency management training down at the National Good. Fire Academy uh, and some of the other stuff that we do regionally. I think it's important for us where we experience so much with the crowds we deal with, but our, our environment that we deal with, the climate, uh, we're constantly be, uh, dealing with problems. As you saw, we had the, some pretty high tides over the last, uh, over the weekend, and we had some events going on, and people were really, really worried about how we were going to handle those, but we were prepared. So. But if there's no questions on that, it's $1,000, and that's been, yeah. I think, pretty consistent for a number of years. Okay. Any um, questions on either budget? No. Mr. Bridal? No. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, and everything seems to be going great. It does. And I do have my um, quarterly report I was scheduled for, if you have mm -hmm. time. Perfect. Okay. And I'll just read this And you're thanking you. your lucky stars you don't live in South Carolina. 
Oh, with something like that, yeah. I mean, we've had our battles with the weather too, so they don't get the snow. So uh, I don't hear anybody from Carolina calling and worrying about me in the snow. So um, full-time staffing, we remain at 34. Uh, Officer Tim Hamlin and Officer <coughs> Sorokins uh, served as our corporals over the uh, the last quarter. They did a great job leading our part-time officers, and it's getting more and more difficult because many of the faces are new every year probationary and it's tough to get them up to speed in such an operation as we have uh, we do have one officer currently out of service due to a duty related injury um, and the prognosis on that one is a little dubious we're still waiting to hear but he, he has some significant injuries a little more serious than we had first heard it was the officer that got dragged by the car during an arrest um, so we're hopeful that he can come back but uh, right now the medical reports are, are a little up in the air so hopefully we can get him back uh, Part-time staffing, 34, 35 sworn. Uh, we began the season with 31 working part-time officers. Uh, shortly after the holiday, we received the reg resignation from two officers, bringing our number to working officers to 29. Summer part-time academy was also being conducted uh, regionally through video conferencing with Hampton PD being the Seacoast host. We had seven officers graduate from the 269th New Hampshire Part-Time Academy. This class was not scheduled to come to work for the department until 2016, but due to the uh, issues I mentioned to you, uh, we brought them on at the end of the summer to help us with the traffic control issues that we were experiencing. Uh, our activity rates were up in a lot of categories compared to the same quarter last year. Now, this quarter began July 1 and ended September 30th. Our uh, calls for service are up 11%. Yeah. Arrests were up 9%. DWIs went down, which was good because we had a bad trend there the, uh, the second quarter. They were significantly up. Drug offenses are down 35%, which was good. Incidents reported up 9%. Total offenses are up 7%. Felonies are up 6%. Motor vehicle stops are up 16.5%, uh, which is good. The guys, we, we have fewer guys, but they're out really stopping the vehicles. Parking tickets down, I should reflect, I said down. It's, uh, you're going to like this number. It's up 45%. Um, accidents up 11%. Uh, the parking tickets were directly a result of our parking enforcement efforts through the, the officers, but also we were only able to bring the supervisor on, but he's a very diligent, hardworking man, um, and he was out there every day um, really hitting it. I can only imagine what we'll be able to do when we hire two or three more next year. That is the game plan to bring on uh, two or three more folks uh, doing the parking enforcement on those peak periods. Operationally, uh, obviously a very busy summer with everything we had going on. Uh, a lot of challenges, staffing levels, ongoing overdose crisis, the level of contacts the department was experiencing of intoxicated individuals. That's still one of the big problems we have is the overserving in our in our establishments. Uh, we're trying to work with them. Uh, we brought in a uh, member from the Hampshire Liquor Enforcement Bureau. We gave him a, a desk and an office in the building. So he would work directly. I happened to walk in the other day, and there he was doing his reports from other communities sitting in Hampton. So it's good to have them there to, to, to get people to understand it's not just us out there arresting people, but it's the administrative function that these folks uh, support us with is critical to, to keep things to a, a reasonable level here in Hampton. Um, Fourth of July, we were very prepared for the busy weekend. Overall activity was up significantly. We doubled the arrests being made compared to 2014. Majority of the rest made on the 4th of July were alcohol related. Uh, prediction of good weather for the holiday, great emphasis was placed on traffic control. Uh, this paid great dividends as we were able to keep the traffic exiting the beach area after the fireworks display moving and quickly uh, relieve the heavy traffic and put it back to its normal flow. Lieutenant Gidley, Lieutenant Gaditis, Corporal Hamlin, Corporal Sorokins are commended for the tireless efforts preparing and executing the department's operational plan for the holiday, which included the whole weekend. Also, like to thank the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, and the University of New Hampshire Police Department for the support during the holiday. Uh, as you remember, we entered into a mutual aid agreement with the University of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. They come down to our busy periods in the summer, which is their quiet time, and we reciprocate. We had officers up at their homecoming, uh, and it, it seems to be working well for us. Um, in July, we entered into a, a collaborative effort with the Hampton Beach Area Commission to find remedies for traffic congestion in the beach area during peak times of the week. And if I could, I'd just write the read you the letter I sent to the commission uh, with our results or sense of uh, how, it, how it went. 
and this was addressed to John Nyan, Chairman, Hampton Beach Area Commission. In July, the Hampton Police Department entered into a collaborative effort with the HBAC to find remedies to traffic congestion in the beach area during peak times of the week. This effort was based upon the observations of public safety and the business community. During our discussions, we discovered differing views of a common problem. We were able to identify critical areas that address the varying concerns of those vested in improving, tra improving traffic flow along Ocean Boulevard. By agreement with the HBAC, the department agreed to provide officers at specific traffic posts during peak periods. We identified the traffic posts to be at four crosswalks on Ocean Boulevard from G Street to D Street. The peak periods were identified as being during the early evening hours of Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. This program began, began on Wednesday, August 5th, 2015, with a start of the department's 6 p.m. shift. Four officers were assigned that evening, and the department was immediately met with compliments on its effectiveness. As we move forward with the program, it became increasingly difficult to staff the program due to our already critically low staffing levels in the part-time officer ranks. The department's training unit, under the direction of Lieutenant Tom Goditis, quickly developed the solution. The department recently graduated seven new officers from the New Hampshire Police Academy who were not due to come <coughs> to duty to the department until the 2016 season after receiving departmental initial training. The training unit developed an accelerated training regiment that would prepare those new officers to work in traffic control capacity this summer, specifically the traffic control, control, uh, excuse me, traffic control program, we began with the HBAC. With the addition of these officers to work in the traffic control capacity, the department was able to continue the program through the end of the 2015 summer season. The entire program was met with positive feedback from the community, and based upon its success, is my intention, budget, and staff permitting, to continue this program going into the 2016 summer season. In the near future, I will provide you with the HPD cost for participating in this program this summer. All too often, people will identify a problem but are willing to participate, uh, participate in efforts to a solution. I want to thank you as chairman and the other commissioners for your generous donation of $4,000 to the town of Hampton to help offset the cost of this program. The HBAC's continued proactive approach and willingness to participate in problem solving and improving the Hampton Beach experience for all of us is to be commended. Very nice. Um, we, we did receive a lot of compliments. It's a lot of people that remember when we, we did those things and were able to staff things like that. Uh, really liked it. Um, you know, it comes at a price, though. It, it takes away from other areas. So our recruiting efforts are very critical this year to get people uh, so we can continue that. It, I think it gives an overall sense of, of safety and the fact that the traffic keeps moving because we stop the pedestrians from going out into the roadway. Okay. I do have the... Uh, state analysis package if anybody wants that I can leave that here for you to assess on your own the sites it, it, it's pretty encompassing statistically and I'd, I'd bore you to tears with it if I went over it tonight mm -hmm. but I can leave that here with you for you folks to peruse but <coughs> kind of gives you uh, an outline of what we do going on to state properties mm -hmm. and the type of calls we're getting yeah yeah I'd like to take questions Mr. Wardell <laughs> yeah uh, good report and it's really nice to see you said DWIs are down and drugs yes um, we did have, um, we did experience, um, we started out the season tough. We were at uh, five overdose deaths in this community uh, prior to July 1, and that's one ahead of last year. We did experience one more in July, so that puts put to six overdoses this year, but it seems to have slowed. Um, other communities are experiencing the same thing, although we did have some stuff up in Ryan Portsmouth. Overall, it, it's slowing down a little on the seacoast. What that means, we're not sure what the trend is, because sometimes you see the summer, it just changes everything up, and we see more of the people that are prone to these things setting up shop. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I get worried when we go into the holiday season, to be honest with you, because we do get some people that, for some reason, that is a, an area where we see a spike in, in uh, drinking, suicides, mm -hmm. uh, and drug, uh, drug issues. So hopefully the word's getting out through the education and the enforcement actions. That, that this is just a, a, a critical issue, and we've got to we've got to deal with it. And we, you said you're still seeing the problem with overserving. It, it, that's an ongoing issue. Um, it, it is a destination community now. When you look at the crowds that come in, you know we talk about the old days when traffic was coming over the bridge at one o'clock in the morning on a Friday. We don't see that anymore. Um, we, I think what you're seeing is more people are staying there because of the improved accommodations that we're experiencing down there with the condos and people are improving their properties. Mm. So while we're not getting the, the vehicle traffic, what we are experiencing is when people come out of the bars, um, 
you know, they're, they're the walking wounded. They are, they got a snootful and, and it's a problem. Just because you're not driving doesn't make it a problem. We experienced, you know, somebody that got, we almost lost somebody, a local person got hit. Um, you know, and there's, al you know, alcohol is involved in all of those things down there. I'm just, I'm very concerned that we need to do more with our business people down there to be more proactive, particularly with the people that are doing the serving, that they have to take this serious, that we're going to come down on them. Uh, we don't want to be an obstruction to good business where we want to work with the business community. But when people are just unable to function walking down the sidewalk, can't even walk on the sidewalk, we got a problem and we need to address it. Uh, one of the things we are going to be doing is coming into next season, uh, we are going to co-host a uh, hospitality meeting at the PD with uh, New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement. And with us, we can plan on continuing the program of having a liquor enforcement uh, officer agent assigned working out of our PD with full access and just continue that program because I feel it's going to make a difference. If we come at them from, you know, the enforcement out there, arresting DWIs, dealing with people, taking protective custody that are too drunk to walk down the street, and we, we refer all our reports to Liquor Enforcement Bureau for follow-up action, um, and they're, they're very good to work with, and they go in and they start asking the hard questions. What training did you have? Why did this happen? We want to see your videotape, and most of the places have video now, and they, they have to provide it to us. Right. So. And the, uh, the traffic the, down the beach area, the control, a couple of times when I was down there during those times, boy, they, they really was doing a good job. Yeah, we're going to try to expand That's that a little, really too. A um, we used, a couple of years ago, we took the initiative and we started using the crowd control fence in certain key areas. My plan is to purchase more of that fence with either with surplus funds or wherever I can get people to get, you know, donate the money for it. It's really not that expensive and use it to our best uh, efforts because it relieves officers from having to do that function. Um, I had a recent visit uh, to Nashville, Tennessee a couple weeks ago, and uh, their main drag down there is just, I, I called it Hampton Beach on steroids because they're not just one side of bars, it was on both sides. They have 174 bars in a four-block area, um, but they have very few pedestrian problems. And I had a chance to meet some of the officers from Nashville, and they explained, you know, it's basically... They use the same fence we use. They just decorate it nice with these nice uh, ventilated sleeves that have advertisement on it, welcome to Nashville. Um, and they look, they look eye-pleasing. Sometimes those things can look a little nasty, they get rusty, but you can dress them up and they look good. But it forces people to use the crosswalks. Um, it puts them into the crosswalk. They got no other option. Now it's both sides of the road. I don't think we could probably do that in a lot of areas, but I'm thinking from, you know, south of the casino, north up to A Street, if we covered that area on, on the west side of the road with a fence for possibly the season or deploy it on weekends. You know, I'm willing to, I know there might be some business folks with some concerns, but in the past those people that had expressed those concerns and now seem to be in favor of it. Um, it keeps the business, it keeps the people there. Um, and it's just a lot safer for us and there's fewer officers that have to manage the crowds in the street and it helps the traffic. So. I'm exploring that, and I would take any feedback from anybody in the community or from the board on what their thoughts on that were, but that's my intention to move forward with that. <coughs> Mr. Brattle. No, I think uh, you guys did a, a very good job this summer. I think uh, as Thank your you. first full, full season in charge, I think it's been... Uh, yeah, but I wasn't worried about it, Rusty. I was fine. Uh, yeah, you were doing a good <laughs> job. This summer, at, at some point, it appeared that there was some like community policing going on in the uptown district. We had some um, police officers up there and walking around. Is that something you're going to look at further? Is Absolutely. That Everything, you know, I try to listen to the different, you know, as much as this is one town, you do have to recognize <coughs> there are distinct concerns in different areas. And I've heard from the business folks uptown. Uh, I know Mary Louise, we've spoken a number of times about we used to have an officer up in the square during mm -hmm. different times. So we tried doing that to the best of our ability with the staffing we had. Um, we didn't get any additional funds for it, but it, I just felt that it was with enough concern being expressed um, to try it. Um, we didn't lose anything from it. Uh, you know, it's just an officer that was on foot. He, you know, we stayed within a two-block area of where he, he parked the cruiser, so if he had a call, he could get to it. When I had the availability, I'd add an extra person just to cover that. Um, and it seemed that we, again, that was another one of those things that we got a lot of positive feedback on. So it, it, staffing and, fi and funding, I intend to do it. Well, thank you. I, I know um, I had a couple people that mentioned it and were appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. that. 
point. Uh, so other than that, excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Walsley. People uptown do tend to feel a little neglected, but given the stress that you have and the staffing that you have, you know, we understand, but sometimes we whine. Well, not now that I'm not a beach guy and I live uptown with the, you know, <laughs> I probably understand it better. Mr. Bean. No question, sir. Thank you for your report. Sounds like everything's really going well. We're pretty pleased. We hope we can keep, keep it going.